Hey everyone, John Michael Swift here. Welcome back to the Triad Chord Scale series. Now we are doing the root position uh, diatonic chord scale down on kind of these, your even fourth strings as I call them. So we're going to be on the A, D, and G strings, be in the key of E, and learning kind of the root position triad scale. This isn't one that gets used a lot in songs, but it's actually one of the best reasons to do it because especially if you're a writer, you're trying to do something creative, there's a lot of sound you can get out of this one. I'm going to show you a little bit how to do that in some of the more creative lessons on this topic, but let's start with the chord scale and then work on toying with it as we get towards the end of the lesson. So first thing I want you to do, I call this the crooked line scale because a lot of the shapes are kind of like crooked lines. Start with your pinky on the seventh fret of the A string, the ring finger on the sixth fret of the D string, and your pointer finger on the fourth fret of the G string. Just E, G sharp, B. And with every triad chord scale, we got three shapes. We're gonna have a major, a minor, and a diminished, at least the diatonic ones. So, so here's our major shape. And when we slide this up to the next chord, the two chord, it's gonna be the minor shape. So your pinky is gonna go up two frets, and it's you could literally take the same shape and slide it up two frets, except the ring finger would have to be replaced by the middle finger fret lower. So you're going to have the pinky now on 9 of the A string, middle on 7 of the D string, and the pointer on 6 of the G. It's going to give you an F sharp minor chord. So you can see the difference between the major and the minor shape in this scale is like this finger versus this finger. So your two chords always minor, so we can use the minor shape here. See so if you can switch between E here, with the pinky on 7, and F sharp minor, with the pinky on 9. You can strum it, you can pick your way through it, whatever you want to do, but see if you can just get that alternation. So the three chord in a diatonic chord scale is always minor, just like the two. So we can just take this and slide it up two more frets. Now we're gonna have the pinky on 11, the middle on nine, and the pointer on eight. Another one of these crooked lines, as it were. So now see if you can just kind of alternate between those first three chords. G sharp minor here, F sharp minor here, same shape, two frets lower. And the pinky goes down two frets, but you switch to the major shape. F sharp minor, G sharp minor. All right, so we're going to go up to our four chord. Four chords major, so it's the same shape as the one we started with. Same shape as the E, using the ring finger here. Pinky's on 12, ring is on 11, pointer is on 9. It's our A chord. So if you can kind of back up to the two chords before this, G sharp minor, pinky on 11, and the pinky on 9 for F sharp minor. Next up here. Just play along in your own way to see if you've got the notes right. Once you've gone over that a few times, you're pretty confident you got it. Let's take that shape and just slide it up two frets. Same thing. That, that is our B chord. That's our, that's our 5 chord. 5 and 4 chords are both major. So we have pinky on 14 ring on 13, and pointer on 11. We're not going to go any higher than this for now, just because some people with that cutaways might have a hard time with it, but you could keep extending this chord scale up this direction. As you're going to see, these chord scales are circular. They kind of go back into themselves and sort of repeat. So let's see if we can go back down to, to the A chord, pinky on 12, and then down to the G sharp minor. Let's just mess with these three chords a little bit until you're pretty sure are sticking in your brain. Down to the A, G sharp minor, up to the A, pinky on 12, and then the pinkies every other same shape up two frets, pinkies on 14. When you feel like you got that, take a second, see if you can find your bit way back to the chord we started on. It's the same shape as we were just on with the B chord, except we're back way down here on seven. So pinkies on seven, ring is on six, pointers on four right back where we started. Now the next chord we gotta learn, now we gotta go down this way. We gotta learn the diminished shape. The diminished shape is the only one of these lines that could be construed as kinda straight, but it's really spread out. Your pinky is gonna be on six of the A string. Your middle is gonna be on four of the D string, and you're gonna stretch back, your pointer is gonna make two of the G string. So it's a very stretchy chord. And here's a yoga chord for you. See if you can get that stretch. Keep the fingers right up to the frets. Make sure they got a nice arch so they're balanced. 
Shake your hand out whenever it gets tired. But here we go. Pinky on six, middle on four, pointer on two. I suppose you could stick the ring finger in there if you want, but I find that stretch much more difficult than is desirable. And then again, see if you can alternate between the E we started on, the major shape, and then kind of really stretched out diagonal line diminished shape. Once you got that down, one chord down below this, C sharp minor. It's going to be back to the minor shape we had before. Pinky's on four, middle's on two, pointer's on one. And crooked diagonal line kind of curving back that way. And if we go below that to the B chord, we have to kind of go below the open G string, so we can't really go any lower than this for now. Not in this scale, anyway. So, what we're going to do, we're going to go back up to the diminished, and just alternate between those two real quick. <laughs> i got to shake my hand out. It stretches, man. It work, yeah. F sharp diminished right there. Fret 6, 4, and 2. And then C sharp minor, which is 4, 2, and 1. Back down to the diminished. Let's see if we can go back up to E here. Once you feel like you got that part kind of woven together, let's try to go through the whole chord scale. We're going to start with the E chord we started on on the seventh fret. We're going to go down to the C sharp minor, back up, and then all the way back up to this B up here. And then back down to the E. So we're going to kind of go down, up, and then back to the middle. If we can kind of weave our way through that whole thing, we should have a decent grasp of this chord scale. So good to do it more than once until it really sticks, but this will be, this will be a good start. So I'm just going to do this very simple finger picking pattern. Actually, well, I do it with a pick too, but it's, you know, it'll just be up, uh, just simple for arpeggio going up. So now down to our diminished here. Each finger's two frets apart. Fret six, four, and two. Down to the C sharp minor here. Frets four, two, and one. Back to the diminished. Give you a little second to get your fingers around it. And then back up to the E. F sharp minor, switch into the minor shape. Pinky, usually the pinky's the guide finger. Two frets up. G sharp minor. One fret up, switch to the major shape. You should only have to switch one finger. The shape should stay pretty much the same. I'm gonna go up two frets and be at the B. And there we go, back down. Pinky's on 12. Down one fret, then the minor shape. Down two frets in the minor shape again. And then back to the E where we started. This chord scale probably doesn't see nearly as much action as it should. It's going to get used a lot in solos, but this can be used as an open string box, very much like the second inversion scale that I taught. It doesn't as much, but it actually kind of leaves you some space. I've actually written a bunch of riffs myself. So a lot of things like that that aren't too difficult to do. There's just a lot of really easy things that sound very good in this chord scale. So I highly recommend messing with it, seeing what you can pull out of it, and working it together with other chord scales in this area to just make things that are richer. So yeah, I mean, if you're digging this stuff and you want to check out more of the licks or more of the other chord scales, stick with the series, and yeah, go use it to make some music. That's what it's for. So yeah, thanks for sticking with us, and catch you soon. Bye-bye.